Kia ora from New Zealand everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Thank you, thank you. I don't know what more to say, but we've reached 10,000 subscribers, actually 11,000 <laughs> subscribers. And I was like, what can I do? And I put up some posts on Instagram and the community tab and I decided to do a Q&A video. So during the time lapse for this puzzles build, I'll answer all the questions you submitted and thank you so much. You submitted so many questions that I don't think I'll be able to answer them all during this time lapse. So what I did is I picked out all the questions related to puzzles and the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships, and I'll answer those during this video. I'll save all the questions that have more of a personal tone and New Zealand related, as well as maybe New Zealand puzzle related for another video, or I might actually answer those as well on community posts. But I promise I will get to all your questions eventually. I just, I'm unable to answer them all during this video because you submitted so many. So thank you so much. I, I really appreciated that. Oh my goodness, how exciting is this? 11,000 subscribers. I mean, I never thought when I started this channel, I don't think it's been even a year and a half ago, I told myself if I had 10 viewers or 10,000 viewers, I would put the same effort and quality into my videos. And they're not perfect by any means, but I think I've getting better and better with each one. And I just want to say thank you for watching, for coming back week after week, for liking, for subscribing. It really, it really does mean a lot to me. It really does. So the puzzle in question today is this one. It's my first Cobble Hill jigsaw puzzle to feature on the channel. Now, Cobble Hill is a Canadian brand from British Columbia. I believe their pieces are random cut. So there's some wonky donkey pieces in here. We'll have to see. The image in question is called Through Swirly Railings. And at the time I was like, what am I gonna do during the time lapse for the voiceover? So I think the Q&A will be really good for this jigsaw puzzle. The artist is Joanne Yellen, and this is from, I believe, 2021. At least the artwork is from 2021. I'm not sure when the jigsaw puzzle was actually released for it by Cobble Hill. It looks like to be a standard size, uh, maybe, yeah, about nearly the 50 centimeters by 70 meter kind of standard size thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. And it does say on the side here, poster included. You know, I love a good poster, so I'm excited to see that. But yeah, let's just dive right in. I'll change my camera setup. We'll open the box. We'll have a look at what's inside and a close up of the pieces. And again, Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for submitting all your questions. I really appreciate it. And if I don't answer your question this time around, I promise I will in a future video. So let's have a closer look at the box. First of all, the box has a very nice texture on it. I really enjoy that. But it feels a bit big for me. Maybe it's comparable to other thousand piece jigsaw puzzles. Again, I love how there's a big image on the box, but they do cover some with their logo. Let's see again, just, you know, nice drawings on all the sides, gives you the dimensions, very close to a standard 1000 piece. Just again, oh, it says average piece size, so it gives you that kind on the side of the box, the dimensions, the name, Poster inside. Oh, so there's a poster included. Okay, well, let's open this up because now I'm curious if there's a poster inside how big it is. Oh, it's a tight fitting box. Okay, so let's put that there. Okay, look at this. So this is a really good size, nice size poster. It's virtually identical to the size of the box. And now looking at the pieces in the box, there's a lot of wasted space. And I know companies try to come up with one size box and use it for multiple piece counts. So perhaps this is the same size they use for 2000 pieces. But if it's not, I would prefer if they reduce the size of their box, include this wonderful poster, fold it and have it in the box. And right there, you've reduced the footprint and how much cardboard you're using. Just my opinion. But this is a really nice poster because it's not too shiny. Lots of detail. It looks like the colors match up quite nicely. Let's open the pieces here. 
And from what I can tell, there we go. Bunch of pieces. Oh, they look like a good variety. I'll put up close ups of pi uh, pictures too. Some, what I like, like, that's a one stand, kind of what we would say, a one prong standard piece, a one prong piece, but it's a little wonky and I like that. I like that very much. The pieces look sturdy enough, thick enough. There doesn't feel to be a lot of puzzle dust, just rummaging my hands through the pieces. There looks to be a good variety of piece cuts. Um, here's one that's still just connected on the side. Oh, there's some wonky donkey shapes too. I love that. Let's keep those connected. That's kind of cute. I like that. And bigger pieces, smaller pieces. So they're slightly wonky. I like that. Oh, look at that big edge piece. That's funky. That's cool. And I like the finish. It feels there's like a texture that mimics what's on the box. And I like that, not too much shine, not glossy at all. I think this will be a really lovely and fun jigsaw puzzle to put together. There you go, there's a bit of puzzle dust at the bottom of the box, but I don't feel it on my fingers. So if it falls off of the pieces and stays in the bottom of the box, then I'm happy with that. So yeah, let's, let's just jump right in and during the time lapse, I'll answer all your questions that you had in in celebration of our 10,000 subscribers. Again, I'm so excited. Thank you so, so much. So I got a lot of questions about if I puzzled as a child, how did I get into puzzling? Did my parents puzzle? Um, basically what started my interest in puzzling. And I thought that I could answer all those similar questions with the following. Like as a kid, I had, you know, children's puzzles. And as a teenager, I remember my mom having jigsaw puzzles out on the table. But then really, I was very much into schooling, university, my master's, and then working full time. And to tell you the truth, it was probably only in 2016 as an older adult that I really developed my passion for puzzling and have been puzzling steadily since then for like the last seven years. How much do you puzzle per day or week? Well, that depends. I try to put out two videos a week and my puzzling does revolve around those videos. But on top of that, I do do, you know, some puzzles just for fun and extra speed puzzling. I would say some weeks, of course, are more than others, but 20 to 30 hours of puzzling, you know, per week, if sometimes more, sometimes less. But if I had to guess an average, it would be around there. How many puzzles do you think you've done total in your life? Well, that's really hard to answer. I could almost count from 2016 onwards, but um, I would say I actually have a list. So since I started my YouTube channel, which was nearly a year and a half ago, I've done nearly 200 puzzles. So that's telling. Now some of those are a bit tricky because that's also counting like the big Graphica puzzle, each section I counted as one. So let's, it's a bit hard to say exactly, but in a lifetime, oh, you know, not a huge amount. I know some people who do a lot more puzzles than I do, definitely less than 500, probably even less than, than 300, but enough. Mostly in the last 18 months have been even more significant since starting the YouTube channel. Does Kelly love puzzling? Kelly's my husband. Um, he enjoys puzzling. He's doing it more and more. He wants to start practicing speed puzzling. I don't know if he loves it, but he enjoys it. How did you meet your puzzling friends? Well, first of all, I met Wendy, who appears in the channel sometimes. I was doing a volunteer event with Odin for Dog Rescue Dunedin, and her and her daughter Jessie had Jessie's son Angus and the kids at this event. It was like a street festival, and Angus met Odin, and okay, that was fine. But then we didn't realize we lived so close to one another, and I was walking Odin one day, and Wendy and Jessie were with Angus, and he was really quite young at this time, and he said, look, that's Odin and Odin's mom. And we just realized we lived near one another and we struck up a friendship and I was into puzzling and I asked her to come over to puzzle an evening and the rest is history. So we met, I met Wendy through Odin and her grandson. 
Um, Val May I met because she also volunteered for Dog Rescue Dunedin, and then we realized we both are into puzzling. Um, Allison, I had bought some puzzles from her off Facebook Marketplace, and then she knew about my jigsaw puzzle display, and she went there and we met there. Um, Mona Lynn and Frey, well first I met Mona Lynn at a wedding. We have a friend in common, and then we realized we had jigsaw puzzling in common, and then Mona Lynn knew Frey, and knew Frey was into puzzling, so that's how I met them. As for Jeanette, Vicky, Judy, and Juby, all through YouTube, um, they all had channels before I started mine, and I all enjoyed their videos, and I was following them, and I actually messaged them, I think, first <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah, I met all of them through YouTube, and now my number of puzzling friends is almost endless because I've met so many at Worlds, and I follow so many on Instagram. It's just great. What was the puzzle you hated the most that you struggled with? Well, it's not that I hated it, but I definitely struggled with that Graphica 6,000 piece vintage travel. I didn't finish it, which is the next question. Have you ever left a puzzle that was too difficult and I left it unfinished? I did. I kind of boxed it up. Remember, I gave it to Val May to try and someone did ask, like, what's the progress on that puzzle? Valme tried, she really did, but we almost feel like they didn't scale the image appropriately or the image quality was not high resolution enough to be scaled up to 6,000 pieces. And so even for her, she had to give up. Um, yeah, it, it's a beautiful image, but it should be a thousand piece, maybe a 2,000 piece. The quality of the image at a 6,000 piece was just... I couldn't focus. I couldn't look at it. It's not that I hated it, but it was too difficult. It, yeah, I don't think the image scaled resolution was good enough. And so I did not finish that jigsaw puzzle. Valmy did not finish that jigsaw puzzle. Um, it's not that I hated it. I was disappointed because I really wanted to love the image. I will, and it's sitting over in the corner and I'm like, do I try selling it? Do I tell people how I felt about it? Maybe someone else will love it. I don't know what to do with it, but I did spend, you know, a bit of money on it. So that's a bit frustrating. There was another um, in, jigsaw puzzle that I didn't finish. It was like black, white, gray. It was a small one I was doing when I was speed running against um, Wendy. I can't even remember the name. It was like an optical illusion jigsaw puzzle. It's not that I hated it. It just wasn't worth my time. What are your favorite kinds of images for puzzles? I love illustrations, bold, bright colors, and with lots of busyness going on. Absolutely love that. What's your favorite challenging puzzle that you would do again? And what's your most challenging puzzle that you would never attempt again? I would absolutely hands down, probably not very soon, but I would totally redo the 54,000 piece Graphica travel around art. So it's so funny because I did not like their 6,000 piece vintage travel, but I absolutely love their 54,000 piece travel around art. And I think it's because those are in sections of 2,000 pieces, and the image quality is perfect for the size of the jigsaw puzzle. As for the most challenging one that I would never attempt again, well, there's obviously the vintage travel one, but I'm not all that motivated for the Educa around the world. Now, I love, love, love the image. I just don't like the piece cut and fit. And also maybe the 6,000 pieces because I'm not enjoying the piece cut and the repeat cut pattern so often, 6,000 pieces in one bag is a bit daunting, but like I love the Clementoni 6,000 piece downtown that was all in one bag. So I probably would never do the Educa around the world jigsaw puzzle again. And that's smaller, that's 42,000 pieces, but I would do the travel around art, you know, if someone bought it and be like, hey, come over and help me, I'd be like, I'm there. Do you have a favorite piece count? This is interesting because I love, love large piece count jigsaw puzzles for the challenge, for the journey. But to tell you the truth, a nice 500 piece jigsaw puzzle just to sit down and enjoy and do in an evening, that's, that's lots of fun. Just, you know, just something, I, to me, I feel it's easier maybe because I do so many of these larger count puzzles 
that a nice 500 piece is just so enjoyable. Are there any brands of puzzles you avoid? Well, this is maybe not so much a puzzle, but I've decided now that I will not support or buy brands that use AI generated art. And there's a few, well, actually more and more that are coming onto the market every day because it's cost effective for them. But I, I have a ethical issue with that. So no, I, any brand that uses AI generated art, I will not buy from them. Will you be doing the Dowdle, Dowdle 60,000 piece jigsaw puzzle? No, I won't. It's not readily available here in New Zealand. The image, although I like maps, the image just didn't appeal all that much to me. So yeah, no, I won't be doing it. Do you ever listen to audiobooks while puzzling? Favorite book genre? Now, the thing is, when I puzzle, I get so focused on the puzzle that if I'm trying to listen to something, I don't want to listen to anything new because then I'm like, my attention is drawn between the puzzle and what I'm trying to pay attention to if I'm listening to something. So sometimes I'll put on like a new movie or a TV series in the background and I'll think, oh, it'll just make noise in the background. But if I actually really enjoy it, and I'm like, no, I got to stop this. I got to watch this when I'm not puzzling. So I don't listen to audiobooks while puzzling because I think my attention would be distracted between the paying attention to the audiobook and paying attention to the puzzle. So I tend to listen to music that I'm very familiar with, or I have musicals playing in the background that I've listened to many, many, many times. As for books, fantasy books. I love a good fantasy book, uh, you know, a murder mystery book also, but I haven't had much time for reading lately, I will admit. My life is all about puzzles. How do your dogs behave around the puzzles? Have they ever eaten a piece? I'm so lucky that Odin and Thora have no interest in the puzzles whatsoever. I literally could put a box of puzzle pieces on the floor. They may accidentally bump into it or like accidentally run into it if, if I left it right in their way, but no, they would not care to even touch it whatsoever. Will you do any more magic shift puzzles or other brands that have a surprise element to them? Perhaps I mean the magic puzzle company because I did one of those. Did I do a magic shift? Oh, I don't remember all the brands. I would. I love doing puzzles with a twist. The only thing is, is they're not easily available here in New Zealand or to come by. And the thing is, it's all about spoilers. Do people want to watch those videos and see the spoilers? Is that kind of mean to do to the brand? But, you know, if a company comes out with like six puzzles, maybe I'd do one and, uh, and make it clear spoilers ahead so people could stop watching. But I would definitely love to do more. Um, what was it, two, maybe two Christmases ago, my husband got me, it was like a jigsaw puzzle, not an advent calendar, but like an escape jigsaw puzzle. I forget the brand of it, but I loved it. It was so much fun. Is it easy to get puzzles locally or do you get them shipped from overseas? What brands are most common? To buy puzzles actually locally in Dunedin, there's a very limited selection. Very, very limited. So I tend to buy online. There's quite a few good online retailers in New Zealand. Um, but also the bigger ones I do get shipped from overseas. The most common brands I would say in New Zealand, there's Ravensburger. Um, Clementoni's pretty okay, but then on the odd treffle, but yeah, I, there's a New Zealand brand called Holdson, which is readily available everywhere. A lot of people asked about if I have a day job, like a profession that's not puzzle related, and how do I balance work and hobbies and, and working and trying to create content for YouTube and what do I do for a living and all, all that type of stuff? Or do I create content full time? Well, my background is in geomatics engineering and I worked in the field until 2016, actually when we moved to Dunedin. And I was lucky at that time to be able to retire at 40 and stop having to work full time. I am registered as what we call a sole trader, which means I'm kind of self-employed and I can take 
jobs here or there, like contract work. I just have to do all the logistics of my taxes and stuff like that on my own. So one thing, for example, is that whenever we have an election here in New Zealand, I apply to work for the Elections Commission. And um, actually tomorrow I'm going to count votes and the doing um, the recounts and doing the special vote counts. So I tend to do odd jobs here and there. It's not a lot. I'm a bit picky about what I do. And I also do like secret shopper stuff, <laughs> you know, go and try something off and on in the store and report back about the service. But yes, now creating content for YouTube is what I do full time. I'm a full time puzzler and I'm just in a position that I'm able to do that. And I really appreciate that. And it, it is a true love of mine. And I, I've gotten better at uh, the videos, but I will admit editing, filming, all that, it's a lot of work and I know by no means a pro. But yeah, I used to work in geomatics engineering with Kelly. He's still in the field. He works at the University of Otago here at their school of surveying. But no, I don't work full time outside of being a puzzler and the odd contract jobs I take here or there. Does creating content take away the joy of puzzling? Does the pressure to upload a video on time take away from the fun of doing the puzzle? I told myself if creating puzzling content became that it really felt like a chore and stressed me out and it took away the joy of puzzling that I would have to change something because it's all about the love of puzzles like it really is. And I do put pressure on myself to upload twice a week, which is a lot. And I do try to make the best content that I can. And luckily I have the time to do it. Um, but I've also realized if no one out there is like, oh, Don Louise, you didn't put a video out. We're unsubscribing and never watching your videos again. So it's a very supportive community. With the members, I definitely you know, wanna make them feel like they're, they're getting enough bang for their buck. And that's a bit of pressure I'm putting on myself to make sure to keep them happy. I think they are. And um, yeah, but no, if ever creating content takes away the joy of puzzling, um, the puzzling will stay and the creating content will go away because I won't do that to myself. Do I have other hobbies besides puzzling? Like things I enjoy that relaxing hobbies, maybe like diamond painting or paint by numbers stitching. I crochet, I knit, I cross stitch, and I used to do a lot of that, a lot, a lot of that. I don't do so much anymore. Really puzzling is, is my, my hobby, my joy at the moment, but I, I do do a lot of that. I've done some paint by numbers. I've done some diamond art. Um, I love all those things. All that stuff is very relaxing. What inspired you to start your channel and why is it about puzzles? So. Remember I said in 2016, I really got into jigsaw puzzles. And that's because I wanted to get jigsaw puzzles that I liked, glue them, frame them, and put them on the walls to display around the house. Well, then the day arrived that I ran out of wall space and I was actually considering putting stuff on the ceiling. And I had previously had a YouTube channel years before. It was about perfume reviews. I absolutely love, love perfume. And um, I said to my husband, not that I needed a justification, but I said, oh, you know, maybe I should start another YouTube channel. I like watching videos about jigsaw puzzles. I love puzzles. I've run out of wall space, but if I make videos about jigsaw puzzles, I have a reason why I need to buy more jigsaw puzzles. So the reason I started the channel was to justify why I needed to buy and do more jigsaw puzzles because I ran out of wall space and and yes, I'm literally, I still have that one big wall behind me in the background that's blank. I, I need to put something up there. Something will come to mind eventually. But that's the reason why I started the channel. How am I going to celebrate 10,000 subscribers? By doing this Q&A video. Oh yeah, and it happened, I think we're at 11,000 subscribers now. 10,000 happened probably while I was in Spain or just after. So it was just just a great happy coincidence, but I will want to do some sort of challenge perhaps at 15,000 subscribers or 20,000 subscribers. It's just, I didn't expect to get here so quickly. So I'm enjoying this Q and A video. What is your favorite emoji from the ones you've created? So 
for the membership on the channels, there's special emojis that the members can use in their comments. You've probably seen them. And I just created the wonky donkey emoji. It's my favorite. I love it. When can we expect Battle of the YouTube Puzzler t-shirts? Well, merchandise, that's a whole, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. I'm huh? merchandise, who? Okay, maybe if ever I get to 100,000 100, subscribers, I'll consider merchandise, but yeah, no. Feel free to make your own t-shirt though. And then when you do the puzzle and you compete in the Battle of the YouTube Puzzlers, even if it's just Sharpie marker on a white t-shirt and send, in, send us a photo with you in the puzzle in your t-shirt, that'd be awesome. Homemade Battle of the YouTube Puzzler t-shirts. I love it. Do you have any specific goals for Worlds next year? I would love to get my performance anxiety under control. Like I know I can puzzle. I know I could have puzzled faster. I know I could have done better, but I was a mess and I just want to control that aspect. Um, yeah, I'd like to be able to finish all the puzzles, <laughs> but um, yeah, it more to me, it's about the overall enjoyment and experience. And I just want to control that nervousness, anxiety that I had and try to improve upon that. How did you plan for Spain, like flights, where to stay, train, and when did they announce the world's date? So, um, planning for Spain, I plan, I plan to do a video about planning for Spain next year. So, you know, maybe two months beforehand, I'll talk about what I'm doing to prepare to go to Spain. But basically, I booked everything through a travel agent. And I booked the hotel that was recommend recommended on the World Jigsaw Puzzle Federation's website. And they also spoke about the train. So I booked that based on their guidance and information. I don't know when they're going to announce the dates for next year. I'm thinking, but I have no official input. It, hopefully it'll still be in September. I hope it's not in the summer months. That'd be too hot for me over there. But... Um, yeah, I used a travel agent, but now having done it once, I think I will try to book my trip on my own and my flights on my own. And hopefully they'll announce the date soon because I think they want to open up registration like early next year. Now having been to Worlds, what are some tips to get ready for the competition and also traveling to Spain? Again, that will probably be one or two videos next year, closer to the time, a few months in advance. Um, getting ready for the competition literally is just speed puzzling Ravensburger 500 piece puzzles of every image variety possible as much as you can and using a count up timer that counts up to 90 minutes and then you're done whether you finish the puzzle or not so having that clock counting rather than just doing the jigsaw puzzle and stopping the timer when you're done like limit your time because that's an added stress um, some tips for getting ready and and besides that oh goodness i don't know if if you're a competitive person and you're used to being in competitive sports or other games or activities then you're probably already better off than i am i would say if you can get some friends together and do some mock competitions and uh, you know get used to other people finishing before you but I have to have a better think about all that because I need to sit down and be like, okay, what do I need to do to get ready for Spain? As for traveling to Spain, definitely stay in Valladolid, um, take the train, take, book your train tickets early. <laughs> That's for sure. Book your trip early. If you can book your hotel early, book as early as possible and get breakfast at the hotel if you can if you're staying at a hotel so you don't have to worry about breakfast in the morning. How excited were Odin and Thora when you got back home? They were so excited. They were also quite tired, but they were they were so happy to see me. I was so happy to see them. I got so many cuddles and kisses and licks. It was wonderful. I missed them so much. As for the best meal I had during my trip to Spain, food Food and me, food is more of a necessity for me than a joy. Um, if I can have some chocolate, I'm happy. And I got these amazing chocolates from Juby that she brought along from Australia. So I realized that's not actually from Spain. Um, we actually went out 
and ate at Mama Tacos a lot, which I realized that's not Spanish, it's Mexican. So really, I, I don't have a best meal that I had because food is just a resource to provide energy for me. So oh, I'm trying to think. No, there was, there was nothing extra special, just good eggs in the morning for breakfast, which I really enjoyed. I would love to hear your advice on how to get better at speed puzzling. Any help is welcome. I'm trying to get faster, but it's so difficult. I hear you. I hear you. It is difficult. Things that I'm going to try to do, like I already mentioned, like 500 piece puzzles of every style, photographs, illustration, animal fur, sky, water, solid color, you know, not just the stuff I love, busy images, um, just a variety of everything and do as many as you can, as often as you can. Um, use a timer that stops at 90 minutes so you're under the pressure of the clock. Try different techniques and see, you know, full flip or sorting or build as you sort. See if any works better for you or try the same technique on the same puzzle or try different techniques on the same puzzle and see if some are better than others. Um, literally, I don't have much advice because I haven't gotten much faster, so I'm still working on that myself. I had so much fun doing this jigsaw puzzle and as you can see in the time lapse Paige joined me for the first part and then Kelly helped me finish the jigsaw puzzle. I really enjoyed the piece cut because there were some standard regular pieces that we're all familiar with and then they had their wonky donkey pieces. So I honestly feel for a beginner who hasn't done a lot of random cut jigsaw puzzles Cobble Hill may be a brand that you want to check out because it didn't feel overwhelming with the random cut pieces. That being said, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend this image in particular because it was, I would say it's a medium, a, a higher medium difficulty jigsaw puzzle. I loved it though, loved it. And we couldn't stop puzzling. We did it until 1.30 in the morning. We just had to finish it. And I know it was perhaps hard to see on camera, but I left a piece in the bag that I had already thrown out in the garbage and had to go rifle through and find it. So we thought we had a piece missing, but oh no, a piece left in the bag. We all know how that is. So yeah, I definitely enjoyed this jigsaw puzzle. The quality is really nice. A little bit of puzzle dust, but nothing excessive or, or outside the ordinary. I don't know if it would necessarily pass the pickup test just because there are some wonky donkey pieces. But that being said, I was able to lift it up and slide it on this board and move it around quite easily. Um, and, and really the pickup test is just kind of something fun we all do. But I like when a puzzle can be slid around on and off tables onto boards easily without completely falling apart. And I was able to definitely do that with this jigsaw puzzle. But I definitely would love to do more Cobble Hill. I've had my eyes on their colorful, like their rainbow color series that looks so lovely to do. And I like the fact that it's not completely random cut enough to keep it interesting but not too much to make it overwhelming so definitely if you're thinking about trying you know a puzzle with some different style of cut pieces i would recommend cobble hill yeah i'm not sure what more to say than that but i did love the artwork it was it was fun it was a nice challenge and something different that i haven't done kind of this style in a long time so i really enjoyed it love the blocks of color yeah i don't know why i started with the white which was probably one of the more difficult colors to start with because there was so much of it. But I concentrated like on the railings and with the black lines. And then I went to the yellow. Paige did the border. Yeah, we just worked together. And then my hubby came along. And you'll notice at the end, we were maybe getting tired. It was late, but we ended up sorting by piece shape. And then it went so quickly. Really, <sighs> I've noticed, especially, we weren't speed puzzling this. But when it comes to speed puzzling, sorting by P shape, 
perhaps a little sooner than I normally do could save some time on those difficult puzzles. And this would be a more difficult puzzle to say speed run. So sorting by P shape definitely helped us at the end. Again, thank you so much for all the questions you submitted. I hope you enjoyed the voiceover. Don't worry if your question wasn't answered. I'm saving them for another video. Like I said, those are mostly like New Zealand related, New Zealand puzzle specific related or more of a personal tone. I will get to them. And thank you to all the 11,253 subscribers I had, I believe at the time of recording this. I really appreciate every single one of you being here. Thank you so much. I will continue to make videos for your enjoyment and especially the members, just a quick shout out to them. That extra support they provide the channel is great. I really, really appreciate it. I'm gonna go look to see if I can find this on Amazon and I'll add it to my amazon.com and my amazon.co.uk storefronts. I'll leave links to those in the description below. Full disclosure, the price is the same for you, but if you buy it through the link, um, I get a little commission that again goes back into the channel to help me buy more jigsaw puzzles and equipment to make these videos. I just don't know how to end this video because saying thank you just doesn't feel like it expresses enough how, how much joy I feel right now at how far the channel has come in such a short time. I sincerely mean it when I say I really appreciate each and every one of you coming back, watching my videos, commenting and liking. It, it means the world to me. It really does. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing. And until next time, ciao. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Being silly now, come on, stop. Oh.